Hey everyone. I am wondering if any of you were able to catch Lifetime's Surviving R. Kelly the second season. Now I feel silly even saying second season. It's just something just feels off about something that's supposed to be pretty serious. Getting such a Hollywood slant as in second season. I mean, are we going to have a third season, a fourth season, like it's a sitcom? It just, it just feels a bit off. Um, just some, it just something just feels off about this. It, it just does for me. Now, I managed to catch a bit of the first episode and then the second. And um, well, some people would say there were new, there was new information uh, presented tonight. There were new victims uh, on these episodes. For me, I felt like it was more of the same. Like, I felt like we had heard these stories before. I don't necessarily feel like anything extra was added. In my opinion, I didn't feel like too much more was added, except <laughs> I hope that they don't ever call R. Kelly's brother. Is it Bruce? I hope they'll never call Bruce to the stand because... He definitely would not help R. Kelly at all. Okay, not at all. But anyway, uh, as I watched, as I said, um, I don't feel like much more was added that I feel like I didn't know the first time around. And which makes me question whether a second season was really necessary. Like I said, I know that there are new women, but I feel like I've seen a lot of these women on the first season, I guess you could say season, the first season. I just feel like I've seen many of these women and uh, perhaps maybe Lifetime's justification is these ladies didn't get to say everything they wanted to say because remember you had to condense these interviews, their interviews were chopped. They, I'm sure they said a lot the first time around. They just couldn't include all of it. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing. I don't want anybody to come on here and accuse me of victim shaming anyone. Because at the end of the day, I, n none of us were there to confirm or deny whether these things actually took place with these women. We were not there, and I don't think it would be fair to say that they are not victims. Now, that being said, that does not mean that what they say on these episodes, what comes out of their mouths, can you can they can't get pushback or they can't be questioned. And that is why these kind of things are tricky because you hear these women talking, which they have a right to tell their story. Okay? I'm not I'm not uh in any way uh, denying that or saying that that's not okay. But when people are telling their stories and there's no pushback, it is automatically assumed that everything that they're saying is absolutely 100% factual. And we don't know that. We don't know that. But I mean, because some of these women that we saw tonight that we've seen before, some of their their credibility was definitely in question the first time around. Now, again, that is not me saying that these ladies are lying. I am not saying that. But I am saying that it it is fair to, to at least say there should be a little, um, I don't know, uh, fairness in giving them a little pushback and being able to question what they say. Right? I, I, I don't think that's wrong. I don't think it's wrong when somebody is accusing someone of something that there can be some pushback or some questioning of what they're saying. Now, for those that might be thinking, oh my God, you are an R. Kelly defender. I am absolutely, positively, 100% not an R. Kelly defender and have never been an R. Kelly defender. And if you've watched any of my R. Kelly videos in the past, you'd know that I absolutely cannot defend some of the things that R. Kelly has done. Now, one of the things that I've always tried to say in, in light of all of this that's come out is that it is apparent that 
sexual abuse runs rampant in the black community. And if gone unchecked, whether it is young women being sexually abused or young men being sexually abused, if gone unchecked, it wreaks havoc for generations. And this is basically what we see and what has manifested in the life of R. Kelly and those that he has allegedly victimized. It is just a mess. It's a mess because he came from sexual abuse and has been accused, of course, of sexually abusing others. It is a vicious cycle that happens a lot in our community. And like I said, that's why I don't want to necessarily just dismiss these women and assume that they're not telling the truth. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But like I said, at the same time, that doesn't mean that everything they're saying is 100% factual either. Now, on the other hand, although I do think, and I've always thought that R. Kelly did some of the stuff that he's accused of. Now, I'm not saying he did everything he's accused of, but I am pretty uh, firm in my belief that he did, in fact, marry Aaliyah. And I'm pretty firm in my belief that he did, in fact, have a sexual relationship with that young middle school girl um, that he urinated on. I feel pretty strong in my opinion about that. And I do believe that he did those things. Now, he is in jail for some other stuff, right? That is related to some tapes and all this other stuff, right? Uh, and a lot of people feel like those, those charges are trumped up. Um, I feel like R. Kelly got to the point where he felt like he was untouchable. It wasn't enough for him to get away with what he had done in the past. He kept doing and doing and doing and doing, and the universe paid him a visit. I just, I'm a firm believer is that you will eventually pay. You'll pay on the front end, on the back end. And R. Kelly had to pay for some of his transgressions, some of the stuff that he has done. Again, not saying that he's doing, he's done everything people have accused him of, but some of this other stuff that he's done in this past, he was going to have to pay for that eventually. He just was. And, and that's just, in my opinion, how the universe works. Okay. Now, do I think that this documentary is fair to the defendant? If I was a, def uh, a defense attorney, I would say, you know what? You've already made this first thing. Now you're just beating a dead horse because you're just kind of showing a lot of more of the same. And you are definitely... Uh, tainting the jury pool here by consistently kind of like putting this out and putting a Hollywood spin on it because truthfully this is a Hollywood production I mean you cannot deny that you can't deny that you can possibly uh, taint a jury by putting this stuff out here constantly constantly being inundated with this stuff again a lot of the stuff that we already heard you know a whole, about, whole thing about Aaliyah and all this other stuff uh, which was interesting to see Damon Dash, Dame Dash on here with his short sleeves, you know, um, <laughs> Homer Simpson shirt on with his gold chain and the dog. And I, I didn't even understand any of that. They just, I, I was just completely like, what the hell is he about to say? Again, he talked about how Aaliyah didn't want anything to do with R. Kelly and he, he could he didn't fuck with R. Kelly. And again, these are the kind of things that I feel like require a little pushback because Dame Dash was also the same person featured in the Fiesta video. Go and watch the Fiesta video of R. Kelly's and you'll see Dame Dash dancing in it. Now, if this is a person that said they didn't want anything to do with this man, just like Jay-Z now, all these people are distancing themselves from R. Kelly. But you were dancing in the video. You were dancing in the video after, again, you said Aaliyah didn't want anything to do with him. You didn't fuck with him, but you're dancing. So these are the kind of things that I think is, it's, it's okay. I think it's valid to question everything. That does not mean that R. Kelly should be absolved from what he is accused of. And that doesn't mean that these women aren't telling the truth or it doesn't mean that they're lying. It, 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 it's just, it doesn't mean any of that. We just, it's okay to question these things. It's okay to question all of it, but I don't know. I just feel like Lifetime is trying to capitalize off of another season of Surviving R. Kelly. And I don't necessarily think it's going to be as successful as it was the first time around. I mean, I don't think they're going to strike gold twice. 
But let me know what you guys think. What did you think of tonight's airing of Surviving R. Kelly season two? I think they have some more episodes coming up. But let me know what you guys think. What do you think about, did you learn anything new from these episodes? Let me know, drop down, comment below, and I'll see you on the next video.